Hello and welcome to the second episode of our podcast Bird Nerds. I am Mariam. Hi, I am Adil. In this episode we will continue to explore our backyard birds. A few of our featured birds today are difficult to identify in the field without understanding their color and plumage. We will try to keep our pace slower than usual so that you can visualize the birds better. Adil Can we quickly brief our listeners about the habitat? Sure. It is a beautiful scrubland with scattered acacia trees and grass that is fast transforming into a concrete jungle. There is also a small pool that continues to flourish till the coming of summer. In its abundance, the land was glorious and it still continues to be abundant with birds in all seasons. In similar habitats across India, we will find other species as well. point noted adil so coming back to our scrubland i'd like to start with a quiz this bird is glossy black all through with a forked tail it is commonly sighted and is quite fearless and also known to be a very skilled mimic can you guess which bird i'm talking about i know this one it is the black drongo all the drongos are shades and play on black color with four tails and upright perching stance they sally from open perches to catch their flying prey mostly insects well this is the call of the black drongo but please note that they are great mimics thus what you hear may be unique drongos are also popularly known as kotwal which in hindi translates to a policeman well the name is apt as it always seems to be on guard keeping an eye on its surroundings it is even capable of chasing away crows and other larger birds this behavior is known as mobbing black drongos are found across india up to an elevation of 2100 meters now i have got one question for you this one is bigger than a sparrow primarily green in color and wears a black necklace it has a bluish green throat bright red eyes and wears a black eye mask It is named after its most preferred food. Fun fact: the drongo sometimes steals its hunt. I am sure you mean the Asian green bee eater. I usually identify it with its pointed long tail, whose central tail feathers prolong into pin-like extensions. Another bird which has a prominent black eye mask and commonly found here is the bay-backed shrike. Yes. This mass beauty is about the size of a bulbul with a grey and white head. It has a hooked tip bill that is strong and stout. The most prominent feature is its maroonish coloured back. It is a deadly predator, striking fear in its enemies. It is a resident bird and is found widely across India up to 2,000 meters. The bay-backed shrike mostly preys on lizards, large insects, rodents, and birds. It has a unique way of killing its prey, impaling them with a sharp object such as a thorn. A real butcher, I may say. Ah, the infamous butcher bird. I have observed it often perches on shrubs and bushes, taking a vantage point. Another shrike which can be sighted commonly in such areas is the long-tailed shrike. It also has a distinct eye mask. Adil, how do you differentiate between the two? The long-tailed shrike is much bigger, being almost about the size of a man. As the name suggests, its tail is long. It is more abundant, less shy, and its upper back is grey, while the lower back is rufous. There are three subspecies of the bird that vary by a bit, but that is for another day. Beautiful but deadly, a dangerous combination. Then, let us also hear the long-tailed shrike calls. Mariam, have you noticed the similarity between the birds we have discussed so far? These are all predators that hunt from a perch, a vantage point, staking out their prey. Insects being a staple diet, they are definitely a farmer's friend. Although the bee eater is infamous with the beekeepers, let's talk about some aerial predators now. I mean birds that prefer to hunt from the skies. 
first one that comes to my mind is the common kestrel. Such big predators are called as raptors. Raptors are basically birds of prey whose primary diet is of vertebrates. The common kestrel is a pigeon-sized falcon. Falcons are great hunters with sharp hooked bills, sharp curved talons, powerful flyers with amazing eyesight like all other raptors. In flight, you will notice their pointy black wings and comparatively long tail. The kestrel often hovers mid-air before taking a dive to swoop down on an unwitting prey. On close encounter, you will notice that the male has a grey head and a light rusty coloured back with black markings. Female is rufous all through with heavy black markings. Underparts of both the birds are heavily streaked. Wow, Mariam, that was quite vivid. Common kestrel is a widespread winter visitor across India. However, it is a resident species in the mountains, the Himalayas and the Western Ghats. It can be easily confused with the rarer lesser kestrel that is primarily a passage migrant. A passage migrant is a bird that stops over for a brief time before heading to its final wintering ground. For a brief period, we get to see both these kestrels in action in Lonavla. Another raptor seen in this area is the white-eyed buzzard. It gets its unique name due to its eye color. As in the adult birds, the iris is white. So you specifically said adults have white iris. I would like to point out that the juvenile and immature of this species have brown irises. You are right. Generally, all juveniles and immature birds do not have the adult plumage and features. Hence, their identification is even more difficult unless seen along with birds of the same species. Coming back to the buzzards, they are medium-sized raptors being much larger than the falcons but smaller than the eagles. Mariam, can we look at an episode for our podcast that will discuss the raptors of India at large without being too technical? Yeah, Adil, sure. That's a great idea. But I do not see it happening at least in our first 10 episodes. Alright. Well, let me take a look at the buzzard again for a bit. Buzzards prefer open, dry habitats where they perch on convenient lookout posts and hunt by pouncing upon their prey. So you get it, why a white-eyed friend still prefers our neighborhood scrubland? Well, is there any distinct feature to recognize this bird in the field besides the white eye? Yes, it has a rusty tail and pale upper wings that are visible on a perched bird. Hmm, I'll take that. Now, there are many birds that forage on the ground such as the Indian robin, the ashy crowned sparrowlark and many others which we have discussed in a previous episode. These birds are always on alert. One such bird is the teeny weeny Indian silverbill, always on SOS mode. The Indian silverbill, as the name suggests, has a silvery black, tiny and stout conical bill. The bill is quite similar to that of a sparrow, which is typical of a grainy bore bird, birds that feed on seeds. Silverbill's upper parts are primarily light brown, rump and throat are white, while the long tail is pointy and black. They are bold and quite comfortable around human presence. They often nest in abandoned weaver bird nestings. Well, they have been regular visitors in our terrace garden as well. And it's been quite pleasing to observe them so closely. So what about the Indian bushlark, Adil? Isn't it too the size of a sparrow? Well, yes, the larks are difficult birds to describe. But their songs are quite musical and a giveaway. They are melodious and are often seen putting up a performance from a low perch. There are four bushlarks that are found in India. Very few differences in appearance separate them. But their songs are quite unique and interesting. Let's hear our Indian sing. All the bushlarks are cryptically coloured with splashes of rufous and sandy colours strewn across that helps them camouflage while foraging in the ground. Dark streaking on the upper body and whiter underparts, especially for the Indian bushlark, which also shows dark markings on breast, separate them. Anything to add, Mariam? I'll go with the rufous wing panel, which is quite prominent. That will do. 
Remember, songs are quite diagnostic. Note that they prefer open habitats, walking and running on the ground where they feed on seeds and insects. Now, since we are talking about small birds, I want to come back to our guessing game. This one is again small, with a short fan-shaped tail, very restless, having a zigzag flight, while calling out chip-chip or zip-zip as it gains height. Something like... This one is a cakewalk, Mariam. You are no doubt talking about the zitting cysticola, an earthy coloured bird with heavy streaking above and size that is smaller than a sparrow. Its flight pattern, its call and its very short tail, especially during the breeding season, is quite diagnostic. It is found across India in such habitats as ours, preferring fields and grasslands. I always enjoy watching this bird in action. Quite difficult to photograph since it is so fast and always flitting about. Hey, I just remembered occasionally seeing the Eurasian collar dove. It was large, almost the size of a rock pigeon. I recognized it by the neck collar which is black and easily visible on an otherwise plain bird that is sandy and light grey coloured. Let's hear its song. That is a good description. The song too is quite distinct. Doves are smaller in comparison to pigeons, with the collared dove being one of the larger ones. Another bird which sometimes hides in plain sight is the jungle bush quail. It often happens that you may just be a foot away from this relatively large bird but may not spot it. It too, on its part, tries to go unnoticed by crouching and tucking away only to take flight when it feels that its trick has been caught. This is when they explode with a whirr of wings, taking short flights in all directions, only to gather shortly a little further away. I think the last time I went to this area, I heard them distinctly but did not see them. Ah yes, the quails are ground birds that are near, tailless and of the size of a dove. They are usually very shy and protective, moving in convoys. The jungle bush quail is small, plump, with a rusty throat and a rusty white supercilium. Males have barred underparts and females have pinkish underparts. They are quite similar to the rock bush quails which lack a chestnut or a rusty supercilium upon close observation. The habitats overlap in places such as ours, and even if you don't see them, keep an ear out for their calls. They would be nearby. So, Mariam, you are quite the birder now. Which other bird did you spot? Any by the poolside? Yes, very much. Our next guest is not at all shy, a fishy predator that I found waiting by the water very still and camouflaged. Its large size, long bare legs and a large pointy black tipped yellow bill made it a bit easy to spot. Even my presence didn't distract the bird. Its eyes and head focused upon something in the water. Do you know what it is? Well, your description is enough to point to only one bird that is possible here, the Indian pond heron. It has white wings and maroon back during the breeding season, and is nondescript otherwise, thus camouflaging very well. The lower underparts are white while the head, neck and breast are buff and streaked while during the non-breeding season. This guy can guzzle down large fish such as a tilapia with quite ease and finesse. This reminds me of my favourite, the white-throated kingfisher, an equally fantastic fisher which dives into water to catch its prey. While the heron fishes from ground level, the kingfishers take a much higher perch. Each one to his own, adept and masters of their trade. So many other great fishers come to my mind. Well, that's for another day. You can check out our trailer to know a little bit more about the white-throated kingfisher. Mariam, I want you to guess this next bird. I'll even play the sound to make it easier. It's a black-headed bird with a short crest, smaller than mana with a white drum and a red vent. Listen to its sound. (whistles) 
what a sweet song it is indeed the red vented bulbul a smoky brown bird with scaly patterns on the body a social and gregarious bird feeding on fruits flower buds and insects it can be seen throughout the year all over india across habitats and human habitations quite precise mariam while we are on the subject of gregarious birds i would like to bring your attention to the brahmini starling a bird smaller than the mayna that is gray above and reddish fawn colored otherwise with a diagnostic long wispy black crest that is characteristic of its name it moves in small flocks is quite chattery and can be seen in most parts of india starlings in general can be differentiated from mynas by their relatively small size straight pointed bills short triangular wings and the absence of a wing patch interesting piece of information I have always had my doubts about their similarities but now you've given us points to differentiate. Well, let's not forget the smaller birds which we spot perched mostly on low bushes, tall grass and reed beds such as the Siberian stonechat and the pied bushchat. Both are sparrow-sized birds. In plumage, the Siberian stonechat male shows a lot of variation. In the breeding plumage, The male has a black head, throat and tail with a lighter shaded and streaked back, broad white patch on its neck, an orange breast and a white rump and wing patch. In all seasons, the female is rufous brown above with brown streaking with a white wing patch and rump, a whitish throat and orangish breast. The non-breeding male is similar to the female. quite rich and heavy let me just make our listeners aware about sexual dimorphism in birds wherein the male and the female are quite different in appearance such as in the case of the siberian stonechat the stonechat is a winter visitor here and across most of india breeding in the himalayas and the northeast on the other hand the pied bushchat is a widespread resident it too shows sexual dimorphism with the male being all black except for a white wing patch rump and vent female is non descript brown mariam if you recall the indian robin then you will remember that they cock their tails well the bush shafts hold it down and occasionally you will see the tails twitch while they call out female bush shaft to female robin differentiation thus becomes easy oh my these small birds can be a pain but i have other problems as well sometimes i get confused between the females of siberian stonechat and pied bushchat you have any pointers on how to differentiate between them that is easy unlike the pied bushchat female the stonechat female has a buffy white supercilium shows heavy streaking on the body as mentioned earlier and also has a white wing patch All right, thanks. I'll try to remember these points. Before we wrap up this episode, I want you to identify one more bird. Here are your clues. A sparrow-sized bird that has a deep forked tail, which you can see clearly in flight. It has a rufous rump and an incomplete orange collar, and we have seen hundreds of them in this area perched on overhead wires. I've got this one. You are describing the red drum swallow. It has deep blue upper parts. You are absolutely correct. Fun fact: It builds mud nests by plastering mud pellets to ceilings, walls, edges, and corners. It patiently collects mud by making pellets, carrying one or two at a time from the wet areas, such as puddles. In fact, all swallows have mud nests that vary in design and individuality. Nest is another subject to delve upon. and is one of my favorite topics another fun fact all swallows are shades of blue white and red wow after knowing this it is very clear that they put in a lot of effort to build their nests i also have a fun fact swallows are aerial birds that spend most of their time flying and circling catching their prey in flight they reduce and check the spread of flies and mosquitoes well As usual there are always more birds to discuss than we have time so let's wrap this episode up 
and we hope you enjoyed listening to our chatter. Please check our Instagram pages for photographs of all the birds we have discussed in this episode, as well as the last one. You'll find them as a compilation in our feed. All photographs have been clipped by my very talented co-host Adil. We will be back next Thursday with another refreshing episode where we will talk about some lovely garden birds. So stick with us, and we'll take you along on wonderful birding trails across India. And as your understanding grows, we'll spice it up with other facets of being outdoors. Make sure to follow us on our Instagram pages. You can follow me on peregrinator. in. That is p e r e g r i n a t o r. i n. And you can follow me on Mariam's pick clicks. That is m a r i a m s p i c as in pick. C L I C K S as in clicks. You can check our show description for our social media handles if you didn't get here. So make sure to tune in next week. Till then, happy birding and a happier feeling. Goodbye.